Pat Smith is a shining example of why it's important not to waste the time we're given. She also knows the story of James Herman Banning. Pat, welcome. Thank you. It's nice to be here today. I've heard so much about you in just the short period of time we found out you were coming. Uh, first of all, by profession, you're a teacher. Yes, sir. Not just any teacher either. <laughs> You've received accolades and honors as long as your arm. Tell us about some of them. Well, thank you. Um, I went to the University of Oklahoma's aerospace camp for teachers a number of years ago and it changed my life. I came back to Broken Arrow wanting to build a mobile space shuttle that allowed children to be astronauts for the day. And we did that and I received the Chris McAuliffe in 1995 to support that program. And then again in 1998 to build a space station at, a, at an elementary school where kids could go in and get off the space shuttle and go onto the space station and, and be an astronaut. Other than that, it's been fun to be the um, uh, USA Today All-Star Teacher Team. I was on that. An Unsung Hero. I'm in a book called Teachers, where they went around the country and parts of Canada uh, photographing teachers doing something they felt was exceptional. And they had my space shuttle out there with all my kids. What it was a fantastic wonderful. story. So you were a fellow twice? Yes. Were you not? Yes, I was. Holy Toledo. I bet your family is just in awe of you. They thought I was crazy. <laughs> oh, no. I doubt that. They I doubt that. Well, usually in public school, you don't have someone going out and saying, I'm going to make an aerospace program that the entire school district can use. In just a couple of minutes, we're going to see some pictures of the man that we're about to talk about. Yes. But first, how did you develop an interest in Mr. Banning? Well, I found him by accident. I was asked by National Geographic to research Oklahoma aviation and astronauts for the centennial of flight. And I found a very small little uh, newspaper clipping about James Herman Banning and Thomas Cox Allen flying coast to coast in 1932. And they were African American. They flew in a patched up old Eagle Rock plane. They had no money. It shouldn't have happened. <laughs> and it did. It did. Yeah. And it totally caught my interest. And I thought, kids are going to love this story. We need to write this story. We need to get this story out. Mm -hmm. He will be an inspiration to all generations. And give us a time frame. He was... He was born in 1899. He saw his first airplane in 1914 out on the homestead, or close to the homestead near King um, uh, Guthrie, Oklahoma. And he then he managed to find his way to Iowa State College where he roomed with Frederick Patterson, who became the founder of the Tuskegee Airmen. Then he, he fell in love with flight and he wanted to learn to fly, but that was impossible for an African American at that time. We, but he found a way to do it. He found a way to do it. We have some pictures we want to share with you folks at home. And Pat, if you wouldn't mind to sure. tell us what we're seeing. That is his pilot portrait. Um, he was approximately 30 years old probably when that was taken. We don't have an exact date for when he received it. That is him and Thomas Cox Allen and their Eagle Rock biplane in Los Angeles before they left out on this adventurous flight. It was totally unheard of for people to do that back then. And there is his fly with Banning, Miss Ames airplane, one of the ones that he built. He owned three at one time in Ames, Iowa. And there's him and Thomas Cox Allen again. It was basically a New Yorker bust on the side of the plane. <laughs> and they left with 25 bucks in their pocket from Los Angeles, headed for New York. And this is Jantique Oriel, who is our banning in the Living History films, along with my partner, Louisa Jagger's grandson, telling him that he made that flight for you so that you can do what you aspire to do. And there's Jantique in the plane. He was in the back seat, which is the uh, pilot seat in an Eagle Rock, or in this particular Eagle Rock. And we're going to see a little bit there of that in just a couple minutes. There he is again. Yeah, he is a New York actor who is in Black Angels over Tuskegee right now, Leon Gray's play. It's... It's ironic when you think about it for this man to have come along, made this kind of flight, and then barnstorming, if you will, around mm -hmm. the country. What must Americans have thought when a black man stepped out of an airplane? He Were said, they looking around him to see who flew it? Was that the reaction? He said they often didn't believe it. And no. many times they felt like it was totally impossible 
as he would have put it, the Negro man is not capable of doing such things. That's the and he was he determined to show them wrong, that not only could he fly, but he could fly with the best of them, and that's exactly what he did. And he did it for a while, too. He did, he? yes. He was not in any of the mainstream papers, though. And he was famous in his community area, but none of the mainstream papers carried his story. We had to go to African-American newspapers, which have been digitalized now, and you can find this kind of information. And he, we found over 80 articles to piece together his barnstorming days and then the flight across country. You know, I'm told that at one time, Oklahoma had somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 black newspapers up and running. I did not realize it was that many. And of course most of them you know mm -hmm. lasted no time but yes. some of them lasted quite a while. And I'd be curious to know who has those records and I'll bet you I'll bet you Mr. Banning's in there somewhere. Well if someone from the Oklahoma Eagle if you're out there and you have those records from back in that day I would love to see them. There's a gap at the library. I bet they could help you. And if, if anyone knows where there might be a copy of those years, love to have them. Let's take a look at a little bit of this okay. documentary, if it's all right. Yes. And what's the name of it? Well, it's uh, James Herman Banning Comes Alive on his website because okay. they're living history videos. All right. If we could, mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look at this. first time I saw a plane, I was 14 years old at the county fair in Guthrie, Oklahoma. Sure was. Wasn't in too good of a shape. <laughs> it had this uh, rickety banging sound coming from it. I didn't care about that. As soon as that pilot turned his back, I hopped and ran and jumped into that seat. I didn't go anywhere, I just sat there, taking in the moment. I didn't mind the nails that were poking me in the back from that homemade chair, I just felt at ease, home. Just like that kite dancing around in the sky like a jaybird. Well, that's until that pilot turned around, saw me and yelled so loud, I hopped out of that seat and tilted right on home. <laughs> yes, sir. But I knew, I knew one day that I'll have my own plane. I knew one day I would fly, sky high. Crack, throttle cracked. Bags on. Bags on. As one good man will soon be deceived. If she can hear from him, he sighed at me. Six or seven. And Cab Calloway, mm -hmm. who has a Tulsa connection in there, by the way. Cleora Butler, Cleora's Kitchen. That's tr I'll get into that another time. <laughs> anyway, uh, wh what, what happens now if people want to see it it's in its entirety? Well, it's not in an entire documentary yet. We have uh, three at the moment living history videos on the Banning website. The fourth one is coming. It hopefully will be there soon. Mm -hmm. So they can log on to his website and see them, use them in a classroom, whatever they need to do. Then we're hoping between now and fall we will take all of the information and filming we have and put a voiceover with it and make a 30-minute sizzle reel to then uh, try to uh, acquire a documentary or feature film wow. investors or studios. Wow. Yeah. Now, will that go to Sundance? Will it go some yes, of the independents? Yes, that is what Jim is planning. Jim, James, James Castle is with Castle Digital in Los Angeles, yeah. and that is his world. He has five national Emmys, was working on Lord of the Rings and different things. Oh, and Louisa wow. Jagger is our main script writer. She's amazing. All of the, the footage that they see are are her scripts along with some help with from Leon Gray and Catherine Erskine um, to make those scripts happen and she directed the actors. she's amazing and her grandson said that um, he is just like Banning because he likes to build things and that's what we're after that's what we want is to inspire children all over the country to go after what they want to do and be who they want to be. I gotta tell you this is a very impressive project 
that you've brought to the attention of the public, I certainly hope you'll keep us posted on it. I will. And let us know what happens, when it happens, and hopefully we can do a little more together down the road. I think that'd be great. We'd I'd be love to be back. So, so grateful to have you here. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. For, for what you've done and for taking time to come visit with us. Uh, and I hope folks will take advantage. Do you still have the shuttle and Broken Arrow? I do not. It was a 1978 Dodge Avco that we turned into a space shuttle. And so it was too hard to find parts about 20 years down the road. <laughs> oh, bless your yeah. heart. Pat, thanks again. Well, thanks for having we me. It was great, great fun to talk about banning. Thank you. We're out of time. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon.